You're watching Catalyst. Season 3, Episode 1. Stay tuned for more shows. My name is Leah Kapronika, and I'll be filling in for Nick this semester as he hits the street and follows the campaign trail. This week, we're going to look at the Republican and Democratic National Conventions to showcase some of the issues we anticipate people will be unproductively arguing about. So, let's take a look at what the candidates had to say. Obamacare comes to more than 2,000 pages of rules, mandates, taxes, fees, and fines that have no place in a free country. I'm running for president to help create a better future. A future where everyone who wants a job can find a job. Where no senior feels for the, fears for the security of their retirement. An America where every parent knows that their child will get an education that leads them to a good job and a bright horizon. All they had to offer is the same prescriptions they've had for the last 30 years. Have a surplus? Try a tax cut. Deficit too high? Try another. <laughs> Feel a cold coming on? Take two tax cuts, roll back some regulations, and call us in the morning. <laughs> now, I've cut taxes for those who need it. Middle class families, small businesses, no, Governor Romney, corporations are not people. People have hearts. They have kids. They get jobs. They get sick. They cry. They dance. They live. They love. And they die. And that matters. There you have it. Straight from the horse's mouth. Donkeys? Elephants. Anyway, there you have it. Now, let's check in with Nick to hear about some of the dirty little details of the national conventions. Nick? Thanks, Leah. You know, the conventions are a lot like reality TV. The best moments make you realize that the producers had no idea what they were getting themselves into. Uh, maybe, uh, uh, you know, when when uh, the uh, what? They threw nuts, peanuts, at an African American CNN camera operator and said, and I'm quoting them now, this is how we feed animals. A lot of stars showed up at the conventions. Jeff Bridges, John Voigt, Eva Longoria, Ashley Judd. But one really big name was missing from the Democratic convention. One, that God was taken out from 2008 to 2012, and two, that Jerusalem is not mentioned. Please fix this. All of those delegates in favor say aye. All those delegates opposed say no. I, um... I guess you got to rule and then you got to let them do what they're going to do. Rule. I'll do that one more time. In the opinion of the chair, two thirds have voted in the affirmative. The motion is adopted and the platform has been amended as shown on the screen. Back to you, Leah. Thanks, Nick. Well, that's it for this week, ladies and gentlemen. Tune in next week to find out what's happening in Campaign 2012.
And now for the events of the week. This week on campus, get to know SAE, Zeta, and Theta at the Meet the Greeks barbecue this Friday, September 21st at the SAE house. Don't forget to bring an appetite and a smile. Celebrate 90 years of fun with carnival rides, farm animals, and fried food on a stick at the LA County Fair through September 30th at the fairgrounds in Pomona. Commemorate the incredible life of Northeast Los Angeles arts activist Hendrik Stuker all week in the Weingart Art Galleries. Enjoy classical Indian music with the Music Circle, free for Occidental students, Saturday, September 22nd at 8 p.m. in Herrick Chapel. And the producer's pick is... This is what democracy looks like. Get your revolution on at a screening of We Are Wisconsin and discussion with award-winning filmmaker Amy Williams this Tuesday in Dumkey Swan West at 7 p.m. Matter is energy. Therefore, we are all connected. It's such a laughably simple fact of the universe. And yet it wasn't until we broke everything that we were able to understand it. Yes, we. It turns out that world revolution and conveniently self-revolution happen most readily through collaboration even if it isn't the happiest of cooperations. Things have been a little fuzzy since I lost my body, but I'll do my best to recount what happened. I'll start in the middle, which, I guess for our purposes, could be considered the beginning. Coinciding with the 125th anniversary of the college, Oxycore, is a summer 2012 research project in which current students interviewed alumni about their Oxy experience. The objective of this project was to document liberal arts college life of the 20th century and provide access to these voices for students, alumni, professors, and those interested in exploring Oxy stories. The first thing to know is that I started off as an off-campus student. Mm -hmm. After all five minutes away, it didn't make sense to pay to be an on-campus student. One day into orientation, I realized my mistake. So I brought my sleeping bag from home, and I spent six or seven weeks on the floor of Stewie in one of the other freshmen's rooms. During the OxyCore pilot project, 58 alumni interviews were collected, capturing over 70 years of Oxy history, from 1938 to 2007. The stories that I've heard, and, and I definitely feel so much more connected to the college. Um, going around to places, I hear these stories in my head. Um, so I just feel, I just overall, I feel like I've gained a lot of skill sets and I feel like a bigger, a part of the Oxy family, which is great. The stories OxyCore collected are unique pieces of Oxy's past, and we invite our community to explore our archive, which is available through the library's special collections. You're watching Catalyst. Season 3, Episode 1. Stay tuned for more shows. watching season three of What You Like on Catalyst. I'm your host, Melissa Donaldson. And today's question is, if you could describe your summer in one facial expression, what would it be? Kamikaze wanna fire bomb. The bomb ticket, you got some bombs feeling me. Tell your man, show me, hey, boost like literally. 
Welcome to our house. Let's step into the kitchen. I'm Noah, president of Food Justice House, and today I'm going to teach you all how to cook curried lentils. So right here in this, we have a half cup of lentils, which should be about right for a person my size. I'm going to cook those with these potatoes, and I'm going to boil those in a cup and a half of water. Um, on the side, I'm going to saute all these vegetables up. Uh, I'm going to start with this minced garlic. I cook that in the oil first because it flavors the oil, gives it, it gives it that nice garlicky flavor. Then I'll add the onions and kind of uh, cook them until they're clear. Um, then add the squash and the eggplant together because those need a little more time to cook. Tomato, I'm going to show you guys how to chop this. Finally, some green onions, those don't need that much time. And then this Swiss chard. And this looks like kind of a lot of it, but it'll cook down really well. Here, we have the ingredients for the curry. We're gonna use a half cup of the coconut milk, about a tablespoon of this, uh, this butter, and then probably one and a half to two tablespoons of the curry, depending on how you like it flavored, and then a teaspoon of salt. And that'll cook up real nice. And then at the end, I'll mix them all together. And a lot of these things, like the curry, you can use this uh, in a lot of different things. I'll use it with rice, quinoa, all types of um, you know, stir fries and stuff like that. So it's a really versatile thing to do. Well, that concludes our meal that we made. You can see the lovely finished product. Um, this is a great meal to make when you have a lot of vegetables sitting around. You kind of just cut them all up, mix them together. Mix them around with these great spices and it's really good. Um, it's also a pretty high protein meal. If you didn't know, potatoes and lentils have a lot of protein. So it's really great for vegetarians. Um, and I definitely made a little too much so I can have some tomorrow for lunch as well. Thanks for tuning in.
brought to you by with special thanks to